But Purdue and New Orleans meeting for the fifth time in history. And the opening tip is won by the Privateers. And Daniel Sackey, the transfer from Valparaiso, will start it out for New Orleans. Privateers are really going to test your defense off the bounce and in transition. They are trying to get things into the painted area. And these Purdue guards are going to have to lock down on that end of the floor. Here is Jordan Johnson for three from the right wing. That's off target. And it's tipped around, out of bounds, and off the privateers to Purdue. No surprise to see New Orleans go into Jordan Johnson early. He leads the Southland Conference in three-point field goal percentage at 45% from three. It's going to be Ethan Morton's assignment. He's going to have to lock in and chase him all over the floor. So you see that Purdue starting five. Robbie, a little bit different, of course, without Zach Eady, who's averaging almost 23 points and 14 rebounds per game. He has been... Arguably the best player in the country so far this season. I don't think it's been argued that actually, Jordan. I mean, it's how good he's been. It's been such dominance on the inside. Offensive glass, getting to the line, you name it. Fletcher Lawyer with a long three in the miss, but a rebound by fellow freshman Braden Smith. These two guys in the backcourt have been outstanding for the Boilers so far. Here's Mason Gillis with space for three. In and out. The rebound first in the putback. Well, Caleb first has been an absolute terror on the offensive glass. Eight offensive rebounds in the win Saturday against Davidson. And there, getting right to the front of the rim. If you're New Orleans, you've got to check him out. New Orleans with the same starting five as they had Monday in their win against Dillard. And now underneath, Simeon Kirkland is fouled. And he'll go to the line. Very nice action. New Orleans again that they're bringing George Johnson off the screen to get him looks from three and Simeon Kirkland Recognizing that rolling right to the basket Purdue just a little bit late coming over Because of that Kirkland earns a trip to the foul line So Kirkland will go to the line for New Orleans. How different will Purdue look tonight? Without Zach Eady potentially on the floor for this game. Well, their offense has been run so much through him, and rightfully so. Over the last four games, Zach Eady's averaged 23 and 18. He has 28 <laughs> offensive rebounds in just four games. I mean, they're video game like numbers. We see Trey Kaufman Wren subbing in her early. Matt Painter talking to Caleb first. It's going to be a different type of attack. You're going to see a ton of Braden Smith ball screens. You're going to see some of these guys. Chris and I, Trey Kaufman Wren's in the game. They're going to throw him the ball on the inside and let him try to go to work. So it should be a good opportunity for Kaufman Wren, who is the 2020 Mr. Basketball in Indiana. He can really score. I know his numbers are you know, just five points, two rebounds a game, only six points over the last two games. But he gets the ball in that painted area. He knows what to do with it. He gets back to that right hand. And so now Purdue back to work. Here is Kaufman Wren working against Kirkland. Gillis into the lane, spins and scores. Gillis just knows how to play. That was pretty good defense there by Daniel Sackey. He blew up that handoff with Braden Smith. But Mason Gillis comes and gets it under control, playing off two feet and gets to his turnaround jumper. Tyson Jackson inside. And Kirkland can't get that one to fall the rebound, Ethan Morton. But he's going to see a lot of that, too. It's a lot of old-school Kansas action high-low with these two bigs, both Kirkland and Jackson. They're going to look for each other. Gillis into Kaufman Red. Now Gillis has space and misses the three. Kirkland has to save it by diving past the baseline. See if Purdue can knock down some of these open looks. They're now 10 of their last 56 from three over the last three games. And certainly a long way to go in this one, but they have not shot the ball well. And despite that, they're 11 and 0. This Purdue team, maybe the best resume in the country to this point in the year. That's why they have that number one ranking. And there's Caleb Wilson Rouse for three with the privateers ahead. That's a huge shot for him. He's one of New Orleans big time scorers and last four games 0 of 9 from the three point line. So to see one go down, a guy that wants to drive it, wants to get in the paint, not going to shot down from the perimeter. Wilson Rouse from Chicago has a lot of family and friends in this sold out crowd tonight. Now Braden Smith with 10 to shoot for Purdue. Gillis to the paint, the kick, Fletcher Lawyer, three, good. And 
Fletcher Lawyer puts Purdue back in front. Man, has he been off to a very good start. Maybe the shooting number is not quite where they will get to. Well, but it's even Brayton Smith. Impressive, though. I mean, the fact that Fletcher Lawyer, who has a big-time reputation as a shooter, hasn't made shots from the perimeter, but still, you know, seven straight games and double figures. He's really struggled from three, three of his last 18. He's a guy that he's, if he gets good looks, if you're Purdue, you're feeling really good about him letting it go. So Fletcher Lawyer, you see him down there after hitting that three. Kaufman Wren picked up the foul, his first. And now the inbound for the Privateers. Kamani Dowdy into the game now, two in blue for New Orleans. Five to shoot for Daniel Saki. Puts it up over Smith. Well short, hit the front of the rim. And Morton the rebound and tosses it down the floor to Smith. Good decision there by Braden Smith. Love that Ethan Morton's looking up the floor. You probe the defense. They get set. And it's like we're going to break. The fact that he described it as you know, if we're going to make the NCAA tournament as the New Orleans Privateers, we're probably going to be a 16 seed, and this is the type of team we're going to play. A terrific experience, and really a learning one for our guys to come out here and play against one of the best teams in all of college basketball. Yeah, it's a cool experience, certainly with Coach Chris Arkenberg as well, who went to Purdue and then transferred to IUPUI, and there is one of the big-time coaches right behind Coach in the back there. I believe that is Son Holden of uh, New Orleans head coach Mark Schlesinger and the whole family is with him as you mentioned Robbie they're going to get to go to Bloomington spend time with his parents for Christmas holiday and it's cool to see the whole family was out at the shoot around today and they really have an appreciation for coming here to Purdue even though they're on the other side of the rivalry being from Bloomington they certainly know uh, what basketball means here in town and Mark's wife was a longtime usher at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. So they're certainly still connected to that program. Mason Gillis hits a couple of free throws. And Purdue now with a four-point lead. Jordan Johnson has it at the top for the Privateers. Omar Henry, the turnaround. Won't fall in the rebound to first. Smith to the corner. Gillis open. Drains a triple. It's very apparent that New Orleans is giving up these three-point shots, much like we saw with Nebraska and Davidson. And they are trying to keep Purdue out of the pain, and they're daring this team to make shots from the perimeter. So far, Purdue doing just that. Now Johnson, a three, and it's good for the win. Well, you just can't lose track of Jordan Johnson, where it's a pin down, that time a flare screen. Braden Smith getting picked off. He shoots the ball way too well. Even looks like that. He's going to punish you. Jordan Johnson, as Robbie mentioned, leads the Southland in three-point shooting. Now an offensive foul against Purdue, and it'll go to Orleans way. First called for the foul, and already... Caleb First has picked up two personals. He started as the quote-unquote man in the middle tonight with Zach Eady out, and so Brian Waddell will come in, the redshirt freshman. You think about losing a guy like Zach Eady. He's got nine games of 30-plus minutes here, I and mean, there's a ton of minutes to go around. Huge opportunity right now for Trey Kaufman or even Brian Waddell. Going to be a lot of guys that can come out here and fill those big shoes. Turnover by the Privateers. Ethan Morton, coast to coast, can't get it to fall. Now Johnson with the green light and drills a three from deep. That's just a lack right there of knowing the scouting report. You're Brian Waddell, you're picking up the basketball, you got Jordan Johnson. He's swinging it to Kamani Dowdy. He's a 24% shooter on the year from downtown. 
Dowdy wisely throwing it right back to Johnson, who again knocks it down from the perimeter. Newman into the game, missing a three. And now New Orleans with a chance to go ahead. Right at the free throw line, that's all. Marion Henry who hits the bucket, his first of the game. You can see New Orleans since the start of this game, no Zach Eady. And they're playing with a legitimate confidence right here. Coming in here, Purdue's gotten off to a bit of a slow start. Right now, you can see it every possession, the confidence just building with the privateers. Yep, on both ends of the floor. Now foul against New Orleans. Simeon Kirkland picking up his first. But it is a huge potential loss for this game. And to be clear, officially, Edie listed as doubtful. There's a chance we could see him later tonight. But some, some, is, Willis, some Willis Reed moments here at Mackey Arena. Right. I, not likely, but <laughs> officially doubtful. This is where Trey Coffin Wren has the whole side. I mean, this is time to go to work, get to that right hand, which is he's, he's so good at getting there. Right on cue. Falls and a foul. I don't think he can hear you here inside Mackey because it's quite loud, but it's like but you, you just know it's coming. He's got the one-on-one -on -one coverage with Simeon Kirkland. Gets him off his feet. There's the contact. I'm telling you, Trey Coffin Wren, he gets to that left shoulder. It, it is game over for you. Trey Kaufman Wren, his first bucket of the game, the redshirt freshman from Sellersburg, Indiana, to Silver Creek High School. Mentioned he was Indiana Mr. Basketball in 2020. Gets the free throw to fall. It's Purdue program with three straight Indiana Mr. Basketball selections to choose to play here all on this team. Anytime this ball hits the high post, you got New Orleans cutters cutting back door. But he's gonna have to be locked in on that all night. Seven seconds to shoot for the privateers. Saki at the top with three to shoot. With two to shoot. With one. He's got to put it up. Shot clock violation. That was phenomenal by David Jenkins right there. Just locking in and not giving anything. Daniel Saki wants to drive it. David Jenkins wasn't going rebounds on top of that 37 foul shots in that game. Haven't necessarily shot it great. Tonight, though, their defense is what really needs to tighten up. They've lost track, especially with Jordan Johnson, and now the pressure really bothering out of the timeout. And that's just that's really surprising to see from Purdue coming out of a timeout. Yeah, so now it'll be New Orleans basketball as Purdue fails to advance it in time against the pressure and so the privateers go back to work down two there's johnson an open three for the wing and cashes in again that's just a beautiful set and purdue getting their wires crossed here you slip the ball screen and a terrific cut and again look who's wide open the best shooter on the team jordan johnson has been terrific here for the first nine minutes of play He's got three threes already and nine points. Spin move underneath and a nice finish from Brandon Newman. I love that action on the weak side for Brandon Newman, a guy that struggled shooting at the last couple games. You get yourself an easy one. Nice screen by Trey Kaufman Wren. And then Newman, the spin move to get himself to the left side. Now the privateers back to work. Omar Henry. And now Kamani Dowdy tries to throw it down low. That yeah, was kick kicked. Ball. Yeah. yeah. Ethan Morton. Really saving a layup with that kick. And that Brandon Newman pin down. He catches this with the intention to score. Using his size. Nice spin move. Let's see if that can get his jump shot going. 0 for 7 from 3 over the last two games. Newman, the junior from Valparaiso. They'll rely on a little more tonight. 
Heavy, team effort heavy, without Edie. Heavy Valpo influence on the broadcast tonight. That's Daniel exactly Saki, right. Daniel Saki, the transfer, and Brandon Newman, of course, Valpo High School. Along with you, sir. There's a three from the top, and it banks in for Tyson Jackson. <laughs> uh, Tyson Jackson just gave uh, Mark Schlesinger the Jordan shrug after that one. <laughs> you know, 0 for 1 from 3 on the year, and their shot clock winding down, lets it fly, and finds the bank shot. Bank is open tonight, despite the weather coming in. And now Kaufman Wren, that's way off target from deep and out of bounds. He's a capable shooter. Shooting a great percentage on the year, but that wasn't really close. Here's that Tyson Jackson prayer that went up there from beyond the arc. Straight glass, and there's the Jordan Shrug. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's 1992. I love that. Almost a steal from Smith in the backcourt, but now yeah, Saki will work it out. Saki's going to have to be careful. Braden Smith has such active hands. You're not careful with it. He will take that thing from you. Right. George Johnson could have shot that. Brandon Newman really behind the play. And that's very fortunate for Purdue. He's just really not close to him. Fletcher Lawyer deflected that out of bounds. And so New Orleans to inbound with 11 on the shot clock. Jackson triggers into Saki. Johnson with three to shoot. High over Morton. That won't go. And now a steal. Wilson Rouse picking the pocket of Lawyer. And a blocking foul is called on Braden Smith. But he's just a little careless. Really all night here, and Fletcher Lawyer getting his pocket picked. Hmm. Oh, that could have easily been a charge. I'm a little surprised it wasn't, honestly. Yeah. But they do call the block, and so it'll be another opportunity here for the privateers. His feet were clearly outside, and it looked like it was solid contact right through him. He's in position. Now a whistle away from the ball, and it's going back to Purdue. We get Tyson Jackson here, moving screen, and Bill Eck on the call. Things even up. <laughs> As Rasheed Wallace says, ball don't lie, right? <laughs> there you go. First is back into the game for Purdue. I get the feeling that Purdue is searching for their identity offensively right now. So much has been thrown into Zach Eady. They, they generated wide open shots off the big fellow all year. And now you take that away and it's certainly a, a huge void in your offense. We can step up and make things happen for this offense. First, nice spin move goes for the slam and he's fouled on the way up. It's going to become one of his go-to things. Caleb first still, still growing as a back to the basket player, but he will definitely spin baseline on you. And here he's letting his defender feel him out. And that's why you go to dunk the basketball. You go aggressively. Lamar Henry clearly getting arm there, and that's a really nice move from Caleb first. Henry picks up his second personal foul. Well, tomorrow night we'll have more college basketball over on ESPN 2 in the end. This is the first game of a triple header. Forward Jalen Wilson and number four Kansas host Harvard at Allen Fieldhouse. Final matchup for these teams before the holiday break. Coverage begins 7 Eastern, 6 Central. It's the second meeting ever between these two. Jayhawks beat the Crimson 75-69 December 5th, 2015. Last year's game canceled due to COVID concerns. How good has Kansas been? Oh. They just obliterated Indiana last Saturday. Uh, Jalen Wilson didn't play all that well in that game, but he's been one of the best players in college basketball this year. Certainly has been. Big story tonight. Best player in college basketball this year, Zach Eady, not playing with the flu. And Purdue, New Orleans, battling in a tough one here tonight. Johnson called for the foul, his first. It's been a rough day 
for the Big Ten Conference. Michigan going down to North Carolina, really the surprising one. In Eastern Illinois going into Iowa and getting a win there. I'm sure Matt Painter wrote that score up on that board coming out. These Christmas games can be a little funky, especially before the break. You have to make sure that you win the game if you're Purdue before you go on Christmas break. And I've heard the speech before. I guarantee you Matt Painter gave it. It can be easier said than done. Guys get looking forward to the holidays and going home. And so far, New Orleans hanging in right there. They've got a one-point lead. And travel and a turnover by the privateers. This time of year, too, the students are gone for finals week, so it's a little bit different, certainly, when you're one of the players. You're still hanging around on campus. No doubt. And give a lot of credit to Purdue, because even though the students are gone, and they certainly have seats to fill because of that, it's still filled. It's still a sellout. And that's, that speaks to the program that Purdue has built and the fan support they have. A lot of programs, you go on Christmas break and the game is dead. It's not the case here tonight. Now, this building is filled and ready to get very loud. If the Boilermakers can give them a reason. First, finding the lawyer on the baseline, two to shoot, muscles it up, no, put back, yes, for first. Nothing's going on that possession, but because of Fletcher Lawyer's IQ, that high basketball IQ, the back cut is there, you put pressure on the defense, get into the rim. And Caleb first, who continues to be awesome on the offensive glass, right there again. Wilson Rouse, the fadeaway, no. Morton racing down the floor for Purdue. Lawyer for three. Four-point Purdue leads. Mark Schlesinger told us we're going to try to drive the ball. We're going to play our high-low stuff. But Purdue, I mean, you're looking at even without Zach Eady, they have terrific size across the board. That has been the case under Matt Painter through his whole tenure. As you all know, every year they've got at least one seven-footer on the team. Ethan Morton just so locked into Johnson there. Never saw the ball and stay right here. That time, Marquez Cooper tried to go up and under. He could not get it to go. Lawyer for three. That's too strong. Rebounded underneath. Gillis. And the putback is good. How good is that footwork by Mason Gillis? Simeon Kirkland with his 6'10 frame going straight up and making Gillis score over the top. But with the footwork, finds the left hand. And Mason Gillis making things happen. Robbie, you said someone was going to have to step up for Purdue. Mason Gillis, nine first-half points. He's been around a long time. He's played in some massive games and been a part of some huge Purdue wins. And certainly missed him with that back injury, but he's going to be a big part of it going forward. End of the shot clock. Sackey misses another three. He's a guy just two of eight from three. Braden Smith can kind of be a rover there. He can really give help. Sackey wants to drive it, and you can see right there, they're okay with him getting that shot up. First throws down the dunk off a good food. And a timeout taken by Mark Lesson. Here at a sold-out Mackey Arena. The fans are ready for one more before the Christmas holiday. And then this Purdue team getting set to get into conference play. They'll have Florida A&M on the 29th. And then go right back into Big Ten play with Rutgers after the first of the year. And the shoot now for the privateers. Johnson trying to go high over two defenders. No. That's with Brayden Smith locking in there and not giving any airspace. And then he hits the three on the other end. He just stuffs the stat sheet in so many different ways. He can impact it on both sides of the ball. Terrific rebounder of his size. Coming off a double-double against Davidson at 12 rebounds. Makes plays for others. Brayden Smith. One of the more impressive freshmen in college basketball, and Fletcher Lawyer is right there, too. Wilson Rouse off target on that three. Morton returns the Karen to Braden Smith. Smith, the first in the post. Kick. Morton for three. That's short. Loose on the floor and it comes out to Kirkland. Oh, 
Purdue team on a 13-0 run over the last four and a half minutes. 15-3 over the last 6.43. And Purdue defense really starting to frustrate this privateer team. And it's been much better over the last six or seven minutes. And right on that play, that's just Caleb first. Now Paul Lusk, who's really Purdue's defensive coordinator, was calling the play out from the time they crossed the timeline. New Orleans, that is. First blew the play up, was physical with Tyson Jackson, and that ball just sails out of bounds. Mason Gillis, Hoffman Wren, David Jenkins, the senior, pulls up for a three of his own. That one won't fall. Boilers now with an 11 point lead as we enter the waning minutes of this first half. Is that going to be a turnover? Both teams going for it. Matt Painter saying it's Purdue ball, and it is. 15. They've held New Orleans off the scoreboard for nearly seven minutes. And that's why they've got their biggest lead of the night. Their effort defensively has been fantastic since about the nine or ten minute mark. That's really spurred them on on this end as well. And now getting great looks. What a pass from Braden Smith playing pick and roll and finding Trey Kaufman Wren. Kaufman Wren now four first half points to extend the Purdue lead. Johnson up top, Kirkland looking at Johnson again with 10 to shoot. Johnson stepped on the line out of bounds. He has done a much better job of taking away the initial actions. And there was a rip screen for Tyson Jackson. Trey Coffin run blew that up. Now these guards for New Orleans have to make plays. Just one-on-one -on -one defense. And this time David Jenkins up to the cause. How about Brayden Smith? Right to the rack, and he's got five. He's already a really good player in ball screen action, but you think about three and four years down the road, how good he's going to be. He is set up to have just a massive career here at Purdue. Well, to your point, Robbie, I think when you look at this Purdue team at the beginning of the year, a lot of people were thinking they might be middle of the pack of the Big Ten. You didn't know what to expect from these freshman guards, but with the way that Smith and Lawyer have played at the starting guard positions, beyond the fact that Zach Eady has emerged now as the best player in the country, I think those three factors have been what have propelled Purdue into the number one spot in the well, country. There was two big questions about Purdue coming into the season. It was how would Zach Eady handle the higher workload? Yeah. And I would say he's passed that with flying colors. That <laughs> yes. would be probably the understatement of the century. And, and what would these freshman guards look like? And if it wasn't the freshman, would it be Brandon Newman? Would it be David Jenkins? Well, the, the answer has been for the starting lineup. It's been Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer. And they've been more than ready for prime time. And the numbers speak for themselves. Warrior, the second leading scorer on the team. Braden Smith has been just all over the place in terms of scoring, rebounding, making plays for other people. And defensively, he can be a pest. Both those guys have been terrific. Braden Smith so far, five first half points. Fletcher Lawyer with six. Feels like watching this first half tonight, too, Robbie. But the first 12 minutes or so. Purdue playing without Zach Eady tonight, trying to figure out who goes into different roles. And evidently they figured it out because they're on an 18 0 run. I'd say, I love the stat about Braden Smith since the 92 93 season. The 24 freshmen have averaged 9.5 rebounds, three assists, and one and a half steals. Only one has ha has done that in the Big Ten. That was D'Angelo Russell. I'd say his career's turned out all right. And Braden Smith on pace to do it as well. Pretty elite company for sure. Tyson Jackson lays that one in. He's got five in the first half to end the run for Purdue at 18 straight points. Pretty two-man game. Again, you're, you're using Jordan Johnson off the screen to make something happen. It's not for him, but he's finding the big fella Tyson Jackson rolling. Braden Smith again to the rack. He's just taking the game over. Braden Smith in the half-court offense. We, we asked start of the game with no Zach Eady. 
who's it going to be making plays? And our answer has come. It's that guy right there. That should have been Purdue ball. And I thought that, that definitely hit off of Preston Murphy. They do give it to New Orleans, at least temporarily here. Smith was pointing the other way. I thought Braden Smith deflected it, but that was pretty clear that that hit Preston Murphy's arm. In either case, it will be New Orleans ball. Here's Johnson. Jumper for Henry. No. Tip back. How about that hustle play there from Smith? <laughs> I mean, he's making every play for Purdue on either end of the floor. Given the body up, this is going to be an offensive rebound for New Orleans. It looks like it's going to be an easy one. But Smith's hustle there. And ball caroms out. And ball going to be awarded to Purdue. Braden Smith, the 2022 Indiana Mr. Basketball out of Westfield High School. Westfield, Indiana. Gillis for three from Smith. No. Kaufman Wren. The rebound, the hesitation, the putback. This was a close game for a lot of the it first really half. It through, through about the 10-minute mark, and Purdue has just ramped up the defensive intensity, and that's led to good things on the other end. Number one team in the country in a 22-2 run over the last eight and a half minutes. About a second difference between the shot and the game clock as we head towards halftime. Steal by Newman. Down the floor. Hello, Newman. 20-point lead for Purdue at halftime. Six most points per game among Big Ten freshmen so far. But you said it. He does so many things well on the floor. And one of the big catalysts for this Purdue team that built a 20-point lead, ties for their biggest halftime lead of the season. They led Hofstra by 20 at halftime. On his first possession of the second half, Turnover by the Boilers. It'll be New Orleans ball. Mason Gillis lost his dribble and really nobody came to help him. New Orleans in full denial, but somebody's killed their dribble like that. And it's your obligation as his teammate to come and give him somewhere to throw the ball. So now the privateers go to work. Johnson in the first half. At nine points and three threes. How about first with the block there underneath? Second chance opportunity for New Orleans. No. Now Kirkland's got it and kicks to the corner. Wilson Rouse for three and drills it. Boy, Purdue is just behind really the whole play there. Caleb first went down. His effort to get back in the play, very well done. However, couldn't finish the possession off. And because Purdue playing a little bit of disadvantaged basketball there, Caleb Wilson Rouse wide open from that corner. Fletcher Lawyer tries to answer with a three, misses there. Gillis gets the pinball and has it underneath. Boilers will reset offensively. Good ball movement leads to Morton. He misses a three. First is there for the putback. We've seen that a few times That's tonight. been his best offense the last two games. And he's made some nice moves tonight with his back to the basket, but... Caleb first, just continuing to terrorize defenses on the offensive glass. Wilson Rouse dribbled himself into the corner, now along the baseline, puts it up, scores, and the foul. How about the start for the second half for Caleb Wilson Rouse? It's a big time move out of the corner. Caleb Wilson Rouse giving you the old okie doke here, acting like he's coming back out, loses the ball, and then just straight to the rim. Gets the contact, goes right through it. Now an opportunity for a three point play. Has the opportunity to get six straight points here for the Privateers. And misses the free throw. Go to work with Gillis at the top. Passed up the three, gets to the paint, gets back. I just love how under control Mason Gillis has been. That's a 
the nice action there by Purdue. Handoff for Braden Smith, and then just roll and replace. You're taking first to the rim. You're raising Gillis behind. And now, because of the shooter he is, Tyson Jackson worried about it, leaving his feet. But because he's so under control, Mason Gillis getting to that jump stop, the head fake, and you're in a trip to the foul line. Now Mason Gillis connects on the first. A bowl season rolls on Thursday night with the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl. Freshman running back Richard Grace leads Baylor against Air Force. And their stud running back Brad Roberts, who's third among all FBS backs in total yards, has 15 TDs. Our coverage begins 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and the app. Watching some of these bowl games, nice tropical places. There's going to be a lot of envy, I'll tell you that. Yeah, especially as two Chicago natives right now, I guess you could say, knowing the snowstorm is on its way. Not looking forward to it, no. to be honest. <laughs> you ready to shovel some snow. Yeah. Turnover by Kirkland, and now Purdue back on offense. Along the line was Smith, stepped out of bounds, and a turnover by Purdue. And this sellout crowd, as quiet as it's been here to start the second half, Matt Painter wants to give these fans something to get loud about again. We talked about this in the first half, but the fact that Purdue is selling out these games is, is not the norm. You go around the country, these Christmas break games can look rough, and that's not the case here. It's an opportunity for people who don't normally get to come to the games to come and be a part of it. Right, students mostly not here. They dispersed for winter break. But every seat full inside Mackey tonight, and it was full about 20 minutes before game time. Yeah, no doubt. Your lawyer against Johnson in the corner first misses a three rebound Kirkland <laughs> Purdue ended the first half on a 24 to 2 run and New Orleans has started this second half with a little more life Johnson from the elbow dumps it into a double team and now Johnson for three off target for the foul call and Mason Gillis just totally forgot who he was guarding there. Matt Painter letting him know right now. Gillis had gotten switched on to Jordan Johnson. We saw him get off to the hot start. As soon as that ball went in the post, Gillis went to help out. But you cannot do that if you're guarding a guy that shoots 45% from three and makes three a game. And that's what New Orleans wants. And Matt Painter reminding Mason Gillis, I don't know the scouting report. Eight to shoot. Wilson Rouse down low. Henry is fouled. The Orleans has had some really good actions off pin downs, finding their bigs rolling to the rim. But Purdue right now with a 45 28 lead. Lost brother with the uh, some of the Buddy the Elf videos <laughs> Purdue has put out right there. Yeah. I don't know if that starts as a Halloween costume and then becomes a Christmas type deal or. And like, is this a multi use outfit? Yeah, I think it yeah. is. I mean, you, you can get double time out of it. I bet it's warm. I'm sure it's it is. A, yeah. It's a cold night here in Spreading West Christmas Lafayette. cheer at Mackey Arena. That's right. 15-point game now after the free throws for Omar Henry. Smith to set things up for the Boilermakers. They're not scored in the last three minutes with the field goal. Six seconds to shoot for Purdue. Smith has that one redirected. Newman tried to grab it. And it's a turnover to New Orleans. A travel up. It's hard to call a travel. There was a lot there. of contact there. Brandon Newman, a very good offensive offensive and defensive rebounder, getting to the glass and well, he didn't even have his feet set yeah. trying to grab the ball. 
That shot clock's winding down. Would have been probably a shot clock violation anyway. Right. Now 10 to shoot for New Orleans. Wilson Rouse, kick to the corner. Johnson against Morton with three to shoot, two to shoot. Has oh, to whirl wow. it up there. How did he get that to go? Hey, if you're Ethan Morton, you just can't defend it any better. And Ethan Morton went high with his hands, so Jordan Johnson went low, put a ton of English on that ball, and just snuck it in. That's like a pool shot. <laughs> thing. That's some serious spin on it. Now Kaufman Wren fouled. He will go to the line. Play clock situation. Ethan Morton with him every step of the way, and he's got the high hands. So instead, you see Johnson kind of wrapping this around his body and just finding a way to score it. Kirkland picks up his fourth foul now, and Kaufman Wren ends a six-nothing run for the Privateers. You're right. Morton had great defense for 28 seconds. And just flings it around it to score. Kaufman Rand hits them both. Dowdy at the top. Tyson Jackson gets it to Johnson. Five to shoot. They go back to him. And a foul called underneath against Purdue and Gillis. They're going to say Gillis was in that restricted area. And once again, the roll guy. New Orleans has cleared that backside out. They found ways to get their big guys the basketball in pick and roll situations. And there you see Gillis' feet clearly within that restricted area, feet on the line, and what they're going to get it for. So Gillis the foul, and Tyson Jackson goes to the line. Tyson Jackson, the junior from Atlanta, a Middle Tennessee State transfer. Had a double-double his last time out against Dillard on Monday. He's had a couple double-doubles this season for the Privateers. Tonight, Seven points, just one rebound in the game. The New Orleans team that comes into this one at three and seven. They've lost two games by a single point. So the record could be quite different. They're expecting to compete near the top of the Southland Conference. And league play begins. This free throw, but New Orleans grabs the rebound and has another opportunity. That's where you take Zach Eady for granted. Yeah. He, he just vacuums up everything under there. And second chance here for New Orleans. Five to shoot. Johnson lost the handle. Tipped in the backcourt. Everybody diving for it. And now a violation is called. Well, you love the effort, but bodies collide like that. Braden Smith laying it on the line. He's glad to see everybody get up. And yep. The effort from both sides. Both teams getting on the floor, getting after it. Turns into a shot clock violation. So you Gillis, your elbow or your shoulder gets out like that. You got bodies landing on top. Yes. Glad that everybody's all right. Well, and then Dowdy sliding across the floor into the cameraman. Like you said, everybody gets up okay. This is going back to his right hand. He can't be shooting with his right hand anyway. You said it. Trey Kaufman Wren now into double figures. 11 points on four or five from the field. He can really score it on that basket. He's just got the knack. <laughs> Open in the corner. Newman for three. Back alive. Purdue up 19. 
Jackson scores with the hook. Now Johnson fouls Smith. Jordan Johnson, three threes in the first half and nine points. Now 11 for the game. Picks up the foul there, his second. Now Braden Smith going to work for Purdue. Newman tightly guarded. Kaufman ran with five to shoot in the post. Muscles to the basket in the foul. And Purdue is just playing through Trey Kaufman ran on that block and it's got an array of moves. Here it's the up and under. Take the middle. Really, really good footwork for a guy who's got a lot of ability. Now an opportunity at the line for a three-point play. Wilson Rouse was called for the foul. Kirkland thought he was going to get it. That would have been five on it. But now Kaufman ran with a season best 14 points. You said it early in the game, Robbie, that Kaufman ran with Edie on the bench was going to get a lot of opportunity Absolutely. tonight. He stepped up. He can score it around the basket. And it's never been a secret. It's really been more about opportunity for him. Because you're playing behind the best player in college basketball, and he's playing over 30 minutes a game, and that opportunity for guys like Trey Kaufman, Ren, Mason Gillis, Caleb First, they're going to play at the four, but the backup five minutes are, are pretty minimal because Zach Eady is logging major minutes on most nights. Eady well over 30 minutes a game. This season is compared to season's pass. Now underneath, Jamon Vincent is fouled. That brings us to a timeout on the floor. Purdue playing inside and outside. In transition, Braden Smith, Gillis, and First have been more effort guys around the basketball, getting on the offensive glass. But the impact that these three have made has been strong. Hoffman Wren picked up his second foul right before the break. Giving Vincent the free throws and he cashes in. And as Purdue moves towards Big Ten play, these guys at some point, and Zach Eady's been so incredible this season, and he's carried so much of the load in all of these games. But you would think guys like Hurst, guys like Kaufman Wren, guys like Gillis are going to be relied upon. And if Zach Eady gets into foul trouble, these are the guys that have to make up those minutes. Absolutely. And so far, Eady's done such a good job. He's got more blocks than personal fouls on the year, but it is going to happen in Big Ten play. And when it does, these three guys are going to have to answer that call. Crowd thought that Henry was on the line, perhaps traveled. No call there. Won't be in the instructional video about transition spacing by any means. Now Henry down the lane and high off the glass and in. It's a tough shot. The defense right there. And Henry taking contact with that left hand, making something happen. David Jenkins finding first at the top. I'm sure this is a game where Purdue would love to get right shooting the ball. They just struggled so mightily. And that's popping around. Once again, Henry kind of losing his balance and. That's his bread and butter. It's the right jump hook. When he gets there, game over. 16 points now for Kaufman Wren. Extending his season high. Six of seven from the field tonight. New Orleans has made six of its last eight from the field. Johnson slithering through the lane and scores. It looks like David Jenkins. He got hit on that screen, stayed with Johnson, and then thought, well, this is done. And... That ball arrives late to Jordan Johnson, and once he got it, it was just game on going to score it. 
Jordan Johnson, 13 points. This is going inside every time. And it's going to be Trey Kaufman around this left block. Go to work. There he goes. That's a block. Second opportunity is fine. I don't know how it's not a block. All right, and they're going to get a block. Henry went down. There was no call, and then Hoffman ran fouled at the end of the play. Give the foul to Jackson on the second attempt. And that's been something that's been emphasized so far in college basketball. They're trying to get the flop out of the game. But I, I do see Mark Schlesinger's point here. It's not that there was no contact there. There definitely was contact. Yeah. And, and, you know, Kaufman ran and got him with the first bump. He got him with the second one. And that's where I think that rule is really hard to officiate. You know, just because of the fact that, okay, there is contact. What if he just lost his balance and fell? That's part of the game, but they're trying to get rid of it, and more often than not this year on plays like that, that's been called a flop. So because of the flop, Newman gets free throws. Hits the first. Yeah, and we, there was contact before that one. It was the first bump there, and then the second one here. And right, so so they're, gets... they're trying to get rid of him embellishing that play. That's what they're trying to do. But it's not that there wasn't contact, because certainly there was, and there almost always is on post-ups. Now, now Kaufman Red gets his free throws after the free throw for the flop. But to your point, and it's a great point, the hard part about this is there is subjectivity. Yeah, it's, it's like block charge. Right. Block charge is the hardest call to make in the game yeah. because it is subjective. And there's some flops that are blatantly obvious. But there's some where, okay, there, there was contact there. Now, did he embellish? Yeah, probably. He went down. He didn't even guard him. And I, I just think that's really hard on the officials, especially that's a big play late in the game. Yeah. And I don't get the feeling they want to call that. Well, but in addition to that, a lot of players in basketball over the last several years, even beyond, were being rewarded for flopping totally. because they would get the call. And they knew that they just had no chance. You see right there, George Johnson just snaking that pick and roll, getting to his pull up. But we've seen it for years. Defenders know, all right, I have no chance. I'm just going to flop and hope I get the charge. So now these guys have to change their instinct a little bit to go down if they're contact with defending. Jenkins cashes in. I like the fact that Matt Painter's running a play right there for David Jenkins, who throughout his career has been a scorer, hasn't shot it well here at Purdue, has really struggled coming into tonight. Two of his last 12 from the field, but that pin down was for him to get a jumper at that elbow. Now they get first. As he got an arm in on Tyson Jackson. It's a great pass. My daddy. Got a strong target right there. Tyson Jackson killing both hands. There's a big. That's, it. that's exactly what you're supposed to do. Give your passer a target. And this is just leading him right to the rim. He's got great position and Caleb first commit the foul before the bucket, but it was nicely done. Executed to throw the ball into your big fella. Seven seconds to shoot for New Orleans. Johnson splits the defenders and scores. How about that move from Jordan Johnson? Oh, pretty. Trey Coffin Wren just getting a little bit overextended on that edge. Jordan Johnson wisely slipping the, slipping the ball screen. Getting to his pull-up jumper. Coffin Wren heads to Jenkins. Fade away no. He has had more shots go in and out. Feel like in Purdue's games this year, he's, he's on the cusp. But when you're at home, those are supposed to go in, right? <laughs> yeah, that's supposed to be the deal, right? <laughs> His body clock's messed up. He's played at four schools. How could he know? <laughs> that's exactly right. This is going the other way. Wilson Rouse, the push off, 21 and nine. For Jalen Wilson, he's been all over the place, an inside and out thread. That Kansas team looks like they are certainly poised to not just make a run in the Big 12, but potentially be a Final Four type team.
And yet again, this Kansas team, just year after year, as you see the top ten with, of course, Purdue at the top spot, Kansas in that four spot right now. And UConn looks great. Houston, I mean, what Kelvin Sampson has built there, the way they defend, it's just incredible to watch. And just the program he's built down there. Yeah. They are as tough as anybody. They crush you on the glass. They trap you in the post. They trap you in ball screens. I think the parity at the top. I don't think there's one team that separated itself as a sure file fire final four team. It's going to be a blast to see these things just work out in January and February and get our answers in March. Three remaining unbeaten teams. One that plays its home games here is one of them, but Purdue at 11 and 0. Well, Richard Pitino's team sitting at 12 and 0, That's coming right. off the the big win over Dad. <laughs> I know. Rick Pitino going to the pit. How great was that? I, that was sweet. It was really cool to watch. Richard Pitino. That's no in Minnesota. Really fun to talk to. Just knows the game. He has been around the game for so long. He is very fun guy to talk to for sure. As Henry scores. No doubt that when Purdue goes back and watches the tape, the roll guy off ball screens and off pin downs is going to be something that they need to kind of figure out here. Hoffman Wren gets a touch, the spin, but he traveled. Boy, I, I don't know about that. that. I, I thought Trey Hoffman Wren kept that pivot foot. His footwork is really what he's known for. It looks funky, and that's where they call it, but an angle kind of tough. I thought he kept it down and then just left his feet to shoot it. I, yeah. I really did. The crowd agrees with you. No surprise. Yes. Right? <laughs> no surprise. Here inside Mackey Arena. Purdue with a 15-point lead. We talk about those three unbeaten teams, though, Robbie, and... You think about how Purdue got here. It's no surprise they were the number one ranked team because look at the wins they already had. Win at the PK 85 tournament, the wins over Duke and Gonzaga and West Virginia. They were obviously a good win against Davidson. That's a shot clock violation against New Orleans. It'll be Purdue basketball. But this resume for Purdue, I think, is the best thus far. I agree with you. Before we get there, Purdue lucky. Ethan Morton left his feet there. And that should have been a foul and two shots for New Orleans. But I do agree. I think when you look at the resumes, especially in comparing UConn and Purdue, you know, Purdue certainly stacks up, I would say, better. And the other teams outside of New Mexico have one loss. And New Mexico really isn't in the conversation for that. Nice pass inside. Kaufman Wren. Now with 18, he's just feasting inside. And he's throwing it to him on the block, now getting to him in the middle of the floor. A nice pass there. Post entry from Mason Gillis. Saki the kick to the corner. Wilson Rouse is wide open, but misses that three, and Morton rips it away from Kirkland. Gillis in and out for three. Set up well there, just couldn't knock down the shot. So this is the third game in a row where Purdue's gotten good looks from three, and you look at the numbers, just five of 18. Kind of continues on with the trend of the two games prior of 10 of 54. It's good for 18% from three in those games. Well, and that speaks to how great Zach Eadie's been because they had not shot the ball well from the perimeter. It hasn't mattered yet. And they crush on the offensive glass and they get to the foul line. And that's how they've overcome that. And to the shot clock, Tyson Jackson knocks down a long jumper. Jackson now 12 points in this one tonight. Back to Kaufman Wren and scores again. 20 points now for the Red Shirt Freshman. He's just putting on a show with that right hand. <laughs> it's every time. It's just he's like a lefty in a way, in the sense that lefty tonight. And that includes in the band where the alumni are all here playing. People say, I'm jealous of the alumni band. When you're done playing, it's just over with. But with the alumni band, deal, you come back and, and relive the glory days and it's awesome. do it in a packed house, right? What a great opportunity for them. Ball loose on the floor. Possession arrow will keep it with the privateers.
4.09 left, and Purdue a comfortable lead. But New Orleans has been pretty efficient from the field over the last few minutes. They're seven of their last nine from the field. And they've hung tough in this one. Saki underneath got the bottom of the backboard. Now Braden Smith. Where do you think they're trying to go here? <laughs> this is I know the answer. Four round one, and yeah. it's going to be Trey Coff and run time eventually. So good shoot. job there. Yeah, Simeon Kirkman doing a nice job denying him the ball. And that was a good defensive possession by the Privateers. Braden Smith wiped out on the floor. Appears to be all right. Brings us to our final timeout. Purdue comfortably ahead. Try to move to 12-0. 3 through 11. I think I think it's honestly impossible right now. You know, it's going to be really interesting to see the way that this shakes out, but they're, you're doing a power rankings. It's not possible to do right now with the, the way everyone has been so inconsistent kind of in that second or third tier. And we saw Northwestern was in third right now. They're 9-2. and two. They had a real tough loss against Pittsburgh in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. But if, they had not, if they had not lost to Pitt, I mean, you think about it, and their, their best win is for sure the conference win at Michigan State. But yeah. you take away the Pitt win, or Pitt loss, they're probably receiving votes or maybe even ranked in the top 25. I think you're right. And their other loss was against Auburn by one point. Yeah. And honestly, they lost the Auburn game, and that carried over, it felt like, to beat them in the Pitt game. They had so many opportunities. They only score 43 points. But I agree with you. It's, it's going to be fascinating to see who comes out of the Big Ten at the top of the end of the year. But certainly Purdue will re-enter conference play as the favorite. Kaufman ran at the free throw line, adding to his total for the night. Simeon Kirkland fouled out of the game with the foul that puts Kaufman Wren at the line. Now, talking to Matt Painter this morning, or this afternoon rather, saying, well, how different will your offense look if Zach Eady is not able to play? He said, well, you know, I don't know if we're going to be able to throw it inside as much. Well, as it turns <laughs> out, they did he, throw it inside he a did, lot. He did say there, he goes, if Trey Coffin runs on the floor, we'll be able to throw it inside. Yeah. I, I would say that that was an accurate prophecy there from Matt Painter. Yes, he was exactly right. Because they have found the person to replace Edie at least for tonight. And Kaufman Wren has had a great game. 22 points in this one. Not the big fellow there, Tyson Jackson going to that slow motion Euro step. Handling it, making plays off the bounce. 14 tonight for Jackson. Now a foul against Tyson. Tyson 17-point Purdue lead. Just over two and a half minutes left, and Kaufman ran back at the line. Kaufman ran, has already taken eight free throws tonight, came into this contest having taken just 14 free throws all season. I think that's more of an opportunity-based deal. Yeah. I mean, when he gets minutes, he is going to be productive, whether it's scoring around the basket or getting to the foul line. 6'9", 225, redshirt freshman. We know over the years watching Purdue basketball, if you're a 4 or a 5 in this program, if you stay in it, good things are likely to happen That's very for you. true. But, but now you can even make the case that if you're a guard. I mean, you That's look right. at Etoine Moore, you, you look at Jaden Ivey, you look at Carson Edwards, and certainly the bigs with Juwan Johnson, Carl Landry, A.J. Hammonds. Caleb Swanigan, Isaac Haas, I mean, it's down the line. It's not, it's really, you know, I, I think it, there was a time where people would say, well, if you're a guard, you don't want to go to Purdue because they're just going to throw it inside, and that narrative is dead. Yeah, yeah. If you can play, you will definitely play well at Purdue well, because Matt Painter is going to put you in, in situations to be successful. Jay Knighton, J.D. Ivey was the sixth pick in the draft, right? So. Yeah. I think he was a guard who well, was very successful. There's no shortage of, of guys, and, and they're all pretty different, honestly, who have been all Americans here and gone on to get drafted. And it's it's definitely a credit to Matt Painter and his staff. It certainly is. You think too about the, the furthest 
Purdue has gone in the NCAA tournament in recent years, and it was led by Carson Edwards. Yeah. And they were knocking on the door in the Final Four, and that's really the one thing where you can make the case that has held Purdue back. Because you're talking about All-Americans since Matt Painter's had the job. You're talking about guys getting drafted. You're talking about Big Ten championships, Sweet 16s. And that's all taken care of. Now it's it's just the the fact that Purdue hasn't been to the Final Four since 1980. That's right. It's really you look at how good this program has been. And three 16s in the last five tournament appearances and in Elite Eight, it's extremely elite stuff. And this program has been outstanding under Matt Painter. Five wins away from 400 as the head coach at Purdue. Now Fletcher Lawyer will go to the bench. Carson Barrett checks in. With just over two minutes left. Purdue basketball. Talking about Matt Painter, too, as he's soon to be four victories away from 400 at the same school in the Big Ten. Three other coaches, or four others, rather, have done that. Bob Knight, Tom Izzo, Gene Cady, Lou Henson. That's where I am. Yeah, that is rarefied air right there that you're talking about putting yourself in. And the crazy thing is, is with Matt Painter's age, I mean, he can... If he wants to, he wants to go you know, into his mid-60s or even 70s, he's going to have some crazy numbers. Yes. Because you just feel like he's got this program absolutely rolling. He certainly does. Brian Waddell, his first basket of the night. It's got to feel good for Brian Waddell, a guy who blew his knee out last year, played so well, still trying to gain some confidence in that knee, and hasn't scored in five games, has played in every game. The chance to be a really good player, but he's going to have to get over some of those things that come with blowing your knee out. Which is easier said than done. Saki into the shot clock. Hands to Henry. Shot clock violation against New Orleans. And now the final minute, and Matt Painter's team is going to be 12-0. Number one in the nation. The second straight week. Last year they got to number one for the first time in school history, but then lost shortly after. But this year, number one for two straight weeks, taking care of business tonight. And could certainly enter January with an opportunity to stay in that number one spot for a little while. The fact that they never were able to play as the number one team because they played a neutral site game last year is, right. is pretty wild. Also, when you think about how good this program is, if they had not been number that, one. That is shocking. You know, with all the good players and certainly some of the good teams that have been through here. They are right now. Jenkins for three. Rebound and the shot clock is off. Alumni band, the fans that packed Mackey Arena tonight, all standing and clapping for this Boilermakers team. And the three remaining unbeaten teams in the country. Whistle with three seconds left. Waddell called for a foul. Boilermakers will move to 12 and 0. I have the holiday. They'll play Florida A&M on the 29th, and then get back into Big Ten play. Rutgers and Ohio State the first on the docket when they re-enter conference play. Dorian Hill. It's a couple free throws, and Purdue runs out the clock. The